Well, it's important to put the JCPOA into context. The JCPOA is a, a agreement that addresses Iran's nuclear program. It doesn't, it didn't address Iran's uh, ballistic missile program or, or other aspects of Iran's foreign policy. Reason being is Iran and the other five major powers that were sitting at the table negotiating the JCPOA couldn't agree on the other aspects of Iran's foreign policy or missile program. So they just focused on the nuclear program. Uh, it, the JCOP, JCPOA, in fact, doesn't address it. What does address uh, Iran's missile program is the UN resolution subsequent to the JCPOA that uh, very, was very watered down. Uh, there are various reasons for that because the world powers have different views on the missile program. The US had a, a very uh, strong view that Iran should not be able to, to conduct ballistic missile tests. Russia and China uh, had different views. Um, and the UN resolution just called on Iran to uh, essentially refrain from testing. Uh, but there was, it was not a, an outright ban on testing. Well, it, it certainly ratchets up um, the decibel level and, and the rhetoric and puts it on a footing toward confrontation. It's not really clear what being put on notice means. The individual, uh, the former National Security Advisor Flynn, who put her on notice, 10 days later lost his job. Um, the sanctions that came about after Iran's missile tests were essentially a variation of the same sanctions that have been put in place by the Obama administration. Uh, I think. What you've seen since Iran has been put on notice uh, by the Trump administration is they've conducted even more testing and now are conducting uh, some war games. So it clearly hasn't had an effect on, on Iran's missile program or its posture. I think the travel ban um, was really a shock to the Iranian public. Uh, because uh, despite the last 37 years since the Islamic Revolution, while the ties between the governments have been poor, there has been a constant flow of Iranian students, Iranian tourists, Iranian families that have been able to travel to and from Iran and to the, to the United States. Uh, so the, having, from, from the Iranian perspective, having them group with a countries, uh, their citizens group with countries that are security threats to the United States, that are, some of those countries are failed states, uh, it has, has had a very negative uh, reaction. Uh, that being said, I think the Iranian public also recognizes that many of the, many of those in the American public are against the travel ban, they see that every day and they, they, take, they take hope in that. Um, and so it seems that the, the court systems, the U.S. courts have, have stood up to uh, uh, President's uh, executive order, and, and we'll see what happens. As far as the uh, the pause, um, the Trump administration's policy, I believe, has called, has, had a, has had a chilling effect on uh, Iran's economic opening, um, because uh, companies uh, are very wary of, of getting involved and investing in Iran, um, while the Trump administration uh, either threatens to rip up the nuclear deal or threatens to escalate uh, its rhetoric. Uh, so it certainly had a chilling effect. I think it, it could substantially impact it. Uh, there's a long time between now and May. Uh, the day before the Iranian election, the Trump administration uh, will have to issue sanctioned waivers. So that is, uh, that's going to be a huge, uh, huge test. Uh, if between now and May uh, there is more confrontation, that rhetoric goes up, um, there, there might be some something that happens, some incident that happens in the Persian Gulf that hits U.S. naval vessels and Iranian uh, naval forces um, against each other. Uh, the, the system in Iran could determine that you know, they, they want a more hardline representative for the government. They might decide that President Rouhani is uh, is too soft and too tied into an approach with the U.S. that maybe worked with President Obama but would not work with, with President Trump.